This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to DCC, Delisle Community Chapel, on Valentine's Day, 2021. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. This morning in our worship service, we're going to be sharing together in Holy Communion. If you are joining us online and you'd like to be a part of the communion service, you can uh, set out some uh, juice and bread now, and then you'll be prepared later in the service to join with us from your home or wherever you are. Our psalm today is Psalm 145, and I'm going to be reading verses 8 through 21. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall, and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. You give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand, and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love Him, but all the wicked He will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise His holy name forever and ever. We pray. Father God, we thank you that you are a God of love. Today we know that we can trust you because you do love us and you have our best interests in your heart. We ask God that as we worship you today, that we would truly do that in spirit and in truth in a way that pleases you, in a way that brings a smile of pleasure to you. So God, may every part of this service give you honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Your mind with all your strength. 
It is so awesome. Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
you so much for loving us first. It's not how much we loved you or how good we sing or anything like that. But Lord, that you loved us first and you showed us the full extent of it. And we just thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 15. And I'll be reading verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the gospel of our Lord. The message today is entitled, Love to the Nth Degree. Are you familiar with the term, the nth degree? It means to the utmost, to the ultimate extreme, as much or as far as possible, an infinite amount. Today is Valentine's Day, a day for celebrating love. So today, appropriately, we're going to talk about love, real love. Love to the nth degree, love to the utmost, love to the ultimate extreme, infinite love, love without limits. Valentine's Day is named for Saint Valentine, or Valentino in Italian. He was a Roman priest or bishop known for his ministry to persecuted Christians in the third century. Christianity was illegal during the reign of Emperor Claudius II, and helping Christians was a crime. Because he married Christian couples, and in many other ways showed his love for his fellow believers in Jesus, he was arrested, tried, and sentenced to be beaten to death with clubs. When that didn't kill him, he was beheaded on February 14, 270 A.D. Another early believer famous for his love of Jesus and those who followed Jesus was the Apostle John. John has been called the Apostle of Love. The early church father, Jerome, wrote that in his extreme old age, John had to be carried into church meetings. As the only one of the original 12 disciples still living, he was held in high honor. At the close of the meeting, he would be asked to say a word. And he would say, Little children, let us love one another. Asked why he always said the same thing, he responded, Because it is the Lord's command. And if this only is done, it is enough. In John's writings, he had much to say about love, about God's love and ours. It is to one of John's letters that we now turn our attention. 1 John chapter 4 and verses 7 to 21. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. 
Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God, must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of our Lord. What do we learn about love from this passage? It begins with these words. Dear friends, let us love one another. This is an invitation to love. We are invited, we are encouraged, we are exhorted to love one another. Love is the identifying mark of true believers in Jesus. Do you know what it feels like to be in love? My mouth felt dry. My palms were sweaty. My heart went bumpity bump bump. I felt scrigglish all over. And then I found out I had a vitamin deficiency. <laughs> the point is, love is more than a feeling. Love shows itself in action. A young girl needed an operation in order to save her life. But the doctors knew that she could not survive the surgery without a blood transfusion. She had a rare blood type. And the only person available whose blood was a match for hers was her brother. So they asked if he would be willing to donate his blood to save his sister's life. And he agreed. As the blood was drained from his arm, he asked, How soon am I going to die? And the medical staff realized that he misunderstood. He thought he was going to die to save his sister. Yet he had not hesitated. That's love. God is the source of all true love. Love comes from God, the Bible says. We are never nearer to God than when we love. The Bible says, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 
This is a bit puzzling because non-believing people can be very loving people. Before we go further, let's clear up the confusion. The confusion arises from the fact that in our English language, we have only one word for love. And so we say, I love God. I love my wife. I love my children and my grandchildren. I love my church and my friends. I love freedom. I love my country. I love motorcycles. And I love my wife's apple pie especially when it's served warm with a big scoop of Chapman's vanilla ice cream on top. So we use the word love for all those different things. But the Greek language in which the New Testament was written has four different words for love. There is the word eros, which is romantic love, the kind of love that usually is celebrated on Valentine's Day. The kind of love that exists between a man and a woman. And then there is storge love. That is family love. The love that you have for your parents, for your siblings, for your children and grandchildren. The third kind of love, the third Greek word is philia, which is brotherly love. The kind of love that you have for your close friends. Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. And finally, there is agape love, divine love. Now, because every human being is created in the image of God, all human beings have a limited capacity for love, for romantic love, for love of family, for love of friends. Natural human love. And that, too, comes from God. But unless we are connected to the divine source, unless we have a relationship with God that is real and personal, we cannot love others with agape love. Agape love is the very love of God flowing through us, through our lives, to touch the lives of others. Those who truly know God love other people with a quality of love that transcends mere human love. Those who do not love, who will not love, who cannot love, do not know God, for God is love. It is only by knowing God that we learn to love. And it is by loving that we learn to know God better. God is love. If you forget everything else I say today, remember this. God is love. This may be the single greatest statement about God in the entire Bible. And it is repeated twice in this passage that we read together today, verse 8 and verse 16 of 1 John chapter 4. Love is God's greatest attribute. Our God is a loving Father. Because of His love, He created us in the first place. Because of His love, He redeemed us so that we do not have to face the eternal consequences of our sin. Because of His love, he gives us the free gift of eternal life. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Jesus is the one and only son of the true and living God. Jesus is the one who is the bringer of life. We live through him. Jesus is the one who gave himself for us. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. On the cross, Jesus sacrificed his body and poured out his lifeblood to save us. 
This is the greatest act of love this world has ever known, will ever know. This is love to the nth degree. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Verse 14. When we acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and our Savior, He begins to live within us. And we begin to really live for the first time. Until then, we're just kind of existing. We live in God, and He lives in us, and He gives us His Spirit. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to God. But when we have God's Spirit in our lives, we rely on God's love, and we know that we will have confidence to meet Him on the Day of Judgment. There's a really profound statement in this passage that is, that is shocking, really. In this world, we are like Jesus. Do others see Jesus in you? Now, we can never be like Jesus by our own efforts. We become more and more like Jesus when His Spirit lives within us. When we have His Holy Spirit, we can live and love like Jesus. Today, we are going to share together in Holy Communion. Communion is an ordinance or a sacrament, a, a special thing in the life of God's people, given as an act of remembrance for the one who gave himself as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. As we come to the table of our Lord today, I want you to think, perhaps more deeply than you have ever thought before, of how much God loves you to give His Son Jesus to die for you. That is love to the nth degree. And as His love flows into your life, allow it to flow through your life so that others will experience the love of Jesus through you. Drink well of the communion cup and know that you are loved more than you can ever possibly know or imagine. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. We eat together in remembrance of Jesus. After supper, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and then he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for many. For the it was just three words, but it changed my life. Just a childlike truth that consumed my mind from my life's first breath till the
Thank you. 